and then you say, we're going to kill him. And then you are a fool to think I would accept such a pittance. Two arms, yes, exactly. Hello reformers and welcome back to a special feature of the Bones of Rangvald and uh, yeah, this is probably the last battle we're going to be doing against these thugs and hopefully then we'll be able to head back to the person that gave it to us, the Lord, the Liege and uh, we'll be able to then proceed with our quest. Now, I've obviously been fighting a couple of extra bands here. Basically, I just want to get as much money as possible, and this, I think, is the last band of thugs in the area, because obviously they do give you 100 per group that you defeat. And, uh, yeah, I have been lucky enough to actually be able to head on over to the nearby town and be able to even, you know, sell a couple of things. So, so that's the reason why I have 482 silvers. It's <laughs> not very much. You know, let's let's be honest. It's not very much. And uh, it's not something that we really need to be like, oh, yes, look at look at me. I have this much money. No, it's uh, yeah, it's one of those mods where they don't really give you that much money for what you do. However, this quest is going to give us a good amount. So I'm pretty happy with that. And the marketplaces all have very little in the way of actual cash. So even if you do sell a whole bunch to them, it's not going to make any difference. All right. So I've had 100% for, I think, about two or three additional parties that I defeated. So we should get about, well, hopefully 1,200, 1,300, something like that. Anyway, let's go in and speak to Baron Torben. He should be happy to see us after all. I can actually speak to him from here. I actually don't know whether I should do that really because that's probably going to result in me talking to him through the wall, which is not very good. Anyway, we meet again about the task you gave me. Uh, uh, oh, okay. So they apparently don't give you more than a thousand. All right. Well, I, I chanced it. You know, I chanced it. I tried to get uh, <laughs> a little bit more. But uh, yeah, they don't spawn exactly a hundred groups because obviously they don't know whether you're going to find all the groups. So... Yeah, they don't spawn exactly 10, they give you more than that, and I guess they just give you a thousand because that's what it's, you know, programmed or whatever to do. Anyway, excellent work, here's the reward. My scouts have reported whereabouts for Robert's camp. Since you've proven yourself against his grunts, you shall have the honor of finishing the bastard. Aha! Alright, let's do it then. Alright, so where where is he then? Ah, okay. So this is, this is kind of, I, I kind of similar to the bandit hideout for when you are, you know, starting a new game in native. And uh, that's pretty cool. So look, there you go. There's some, there's some thugs. So yeah, if you so were so inclined, you could obviously continue fighting some thugs here. You're not going to get more than a thousand, unfortunately enough, but they are pretty easy enemies and they do drop quite a lot of loot, so it's kind of nice. Anyway, let's go to Robert's hideout. I'm just being very careful because you never know whether those Corsairs are going to be around the corner. I now have, wow, actually a pretty decent amount of cash. And we're going to be leveling ourselves up a little bit. As you can see here, I've leveled up another two times, which is pretty nice. Anyway, I'm just going to continue leveling intelligence, I feel. We'll go for another point in, I guess, uh, Weapon Master. And I'm, I'm pretty awful at this. Ooh! Yes, I forgot to mention, they've added a skill in the form of lockpicking. And it is an intelligence skill, so that makes it even better, and it maxes out at level 5. Each level allows you to pick more locks, including chests, doors, and other things. So, let's get three points in that. That's obviously going to be extremely fun to see what we can lockpick. And I'm going to just level up a couple of two-handed weapons. You never know whether I'm going to be using a two-handed at some point, and otherwise... Let's head into the hideout. Now, I'm not entirely sure whether we're going to... Oh my. Yes, whether we're going to be met by something very tricky or uh, whether it's going to be one of those times where I completely overestimate how strong or how weak the enemy is going to be. But uh, I think we should be okay. I mean, these guys, they seem relatively similar to the thugs we've been fighting for the most part. So let's be a little bit cautious here. Got to make sure that I get my... Uh, get my good slashes in here and there and uh, oh yeah I think I should probably clear up what I said in the previous episode about how crossbowmen are a little bit more complicated to use 
a little bit more difficult to use than spearmen. That's that's actually what I was getting at there. I was getting at the fact that in comparison to other units, ranged units are of, of course going to be a little bit more difficult to use in the way that you can just charge spearmen in and they'll do their jobs. Whereas crossbowmen, you, you obviously need to hold position and you need to get them a good position. Otherwise, you know, they're not going to be that effective. That was what I was getting at. Anyway, hopefully that has now come across appropriately enough and uh, we should maybe stay down here and see which enemies I can kill from this spawn point because it seems like they're, they're spawning here quite often. But if we go up there, then we should have a much greater chance of getting more kills. Yeah, we did get quite a few kills down here so far. Ah, Robert has emerged from the hut where he was hiding. Kill him. Okay, I have no idea where... Oh, there he is. He's actually back here. Hilariously enough, back at the hut that I was waiting at. Isn't that amusing? Anyway, let's see if we can eliminate him. And uh, yes, hopefully in this episode we'll be able to explore a little bit more about the various faction units and things like that. I mean, that's the thing. With this kind of organic progression that we're having here, we're able to kind of explore a little bit how we're doing with these units right here. Oh, what is this? A scouting group of Hernar has discovered the camp and finding you has decided to attack. Well, this is not good. Well, uh, yeah, uh, this is, this is kind of, this is kind of awkward. Yeah, it's very, very awkward indeed, especially considering there's an undead unit that they have there. Did you, do you see that? I'm a bit worried about this. Okay, let's see if I can do a little bit of damage here. Just a little bit, just a little bit. Yeah, nice. Oh, that was some nice damage. These guys are wearing helmets, so that's not particularly good. That makes it more difficult for me to be able to deal damage to them with my wonderful overhead slashes. Oh, there we go. Turn our ancestors. Do they have some kind of necromancy power? That's pretty crazy. There we go. Well, we've eliminated those. And now all we need to do is deal with this last guy. No, there's actually two enemies remaining. I'm the only one left out of my party. So that's not very good. But uh, hopefully... I'm going to get out my shield here just to make sure that I don't get shot at all while I'm coming down the stairs. And then we're going to switch to two-handed and slash him. There we go. Okay, that was easy enough. Hopefully no more surprises. No more surprises. Okay, phew. That was that was kind of close. All right, so let's... Uh, oh, yeah. Let's get ourselves decked out in some awesome stuff. And we are also going to be gaining a wonderful two-handed axe. And I think I'm actually going to use this. I think I'm actually going to use this. Even though the scythe has been a very worthy ally for us so far... The axe seems just so much better, so we're just going to use that for now. And that's exactly the reason why I was specking into two-handed weapon proficiency. I know some people think to you know think to themselves, "What what is he doing? Oh, he's specking into many many different weapon proficiencies. It's not. Oh, I don't believe it. He's using a one-handed and not specking into one-handed. Yeah, that's the kind of thing that uh, I try to do. You know, I just try to get. A little bit more variety when it comes to the weapon proficiencies. Because you never know when you're going to come across a weapon that you really like. And so I'm going to spec one more point in intelligence here. Just so that I can actually max out my lock picking. So that is that is done. That is done. So anything we come across now, it's going to be fantastic for us to use. Bear in mind my pole arms basically have about double the amount of two-handed weapon proficiency we have as well. So obviously I'm not going to be extremely effective at using this axe for the first couple of battles but we'll see how it goes anyway as you can see here we have our first I think yes we have our first tier 3 I think they are tier 3 melee units and I'm not entirely sure what to go for should we go for scouts or should we go for spearmen I guess we'll go for spearmen because I feel like scouts might actually not be able to progress into any other unit so let's just see yeah they just go into then veteran spearmen so they go trained and then veteran spearmen oh okay well, that's fine. Anyway, let's uh, let's actually see. Is there a? There is no there, no. There is no troop tree right here. I actually wondered whether I missed that in the previous episode, so I thought I'd take a look at it here. But there is actually no troop tree to take a look at, so we can't see any kind of preview of the various units. But what I'd like to do, for the most part, 
with the special feature series. I don't exactly know whether it's going to turn into a full series because as I say it is an alpha version of the mod and it's nice to take a you know a preview look at it because it is looking extremely fun and very well polished so far. I'm having no optimization problems as well so if you're worried about that I'm not getting any frame drops or anything so yeah, that's pretty awesome. Anyway, let's uh, see what he says. Excellent, Robert is dead, as well as a few Northmen. Hopefully the forest will recover and our game will return to health. Have you eaten wild boar reformist? We shall feast on one in but a matter of weeks, I believe. Weeks? Well, I, uh, I'm kind of hungry right now, actually, Baron Torben. Ah, uh, well, anyway. Do you have any tasks? Uh, okay. So apparently that was just the introduction, uh, intro introduction, I guess. And uh, we do have this other thing that we can do, which I guess we'll do because it gives us the opportunity to earn some more relation with Baron Torben. And we also have the opportunity to maybe get a little bit of extra experience and all that sort of wonderful stuff. So let's have a look at where Saren actually is. Saren's all the way over there. So that's going to take us on a pretty nice journey, I have to say. And uh, let's try and avoid... Oh, what was that? Okay, I have no idea what that was, but maybe I can read it here. Nope. Okay, well, <laughs> yes, I, I guess you have to play the mod yourself if you want to see that particular pop-up, because obviously I was clicking on the screen at the time. Anyway, we have received a letter requesting a meeting in the Tavern of Neapoinen. Yeah, do forgive my pronunciation. Anyway, where is that? Where is that? It's a, it's a large world, so we might have some issues finding it, but I expect it to be in the tavern I I don't see it wow that's uh, that's kind of crazy that means I'm gonna be going on a very very long journey oh there it is it's over there oh interesting okay well I guess what we'll do is we'll stop by at Saren and we will be participating in hunting down the so-called murderer and then we'll head on from there all right, so we've arrived at Saren, and we are now about to slaughter the nervous man where he stands. So let us say that we are looking for a murderer by the name of Brabus the Pauper. Yes, drop your sword if you're instant. Oh, yes, he's, he's not going to do that. I come not for money, but to execute the law. Okay, so let's do this. Let's let's go judge dread on him right now. Okay, he's, he's apparently not wanting to fight us? Weird. Okay. I actually would have expected him to fight a little bit more than that, but never mind. There we go. We were able to eliminate him, and that means that we should have no more time limit on the task, and that will enable us to head on over to the town for the main quest. Alright, so we have arrived at the town, and uh, we're going to be heading into the tavern here and seeing just who sent the letter. Ah, well, I think we know who sent the letter. Mysterious figure. Hello, Mr. Figure. Yes. Bring me an ale, Runt, and make it snappy. I received this letter. Would you know anything about it? <laughs> Excellent. Well, reformers, let's just say you've attracted our attention. You seem to have the strength necessary. Time is short. There is no telling if the enemy has already found out our plan, but we should not wait and see. We need to slay them in their disguises because that is where they are most vulnerable to us. Your first assignment is to attack a caravan belonging to a merchant named Rodrigo. Rodrigo is an important man in the trading realm, but in the black market he deals in weapons, no matter the customer. That includes our enemy. If the enemy were to pay him enough, they would have a powerful ally, let's say. This is why he must be slain. His caravan isn't like others, however. He's paid some kingdoms for a small contingent of guards to aid him in his sails. Given the state of Eirun at this time, this means you'll likely be facing trained soldiers rather than simple mercenaries. Rodrigo regularly pays off bandits in his travels, so none tend to bother him. You are not a bandit, however, so if he offers you coin in exchange for safe travel, refuse him. The reward, I promise, is much greater than what he will offer, I assure you. So what say you? Are you ready to prove your mettle? Ah, uh, sure. I have a bad feeling about this, actually. Anyway. Good. Now the last time my informants have seen Rodrigo's caravan, he was near Teresium. Or, well, however you say it. Anyway, his route will take him from Tildale to Canloch. If you catch him on the way, do not hesitate to close in on him. We will meet next in the streets of Largo. Okay. Shall I shall I get some of these mercenary horsemen? That's actually a lot of money. I don't I don't I don't have that much. Sorry. 
Yeah, that's not particularly good. Anyway, let's sell a whole bunch of stuff here because I can, and uh, it would be kind of nice to get a little bit of extra, a little bit of extra cash. There we go, and that's it. Okay, that's great. All right, so where where is he going to be? I actually have no idea where he's going to be. Pick up your reward from the man who give you the quest. Okay, he will be in the streets of Lago. Oh, okay. So, let's just take a quick look around here and actually see. Ah, okay, so Teresium is where he's probably going to be around. Alright, so I've caught up with Rodrigo the Merchant, and, uh, well, let me just say that because this is a special feature, I don't really intend to invest too much time in advancing my troops, because obviously that is not really the reason why we're playing this mod, obviously. The reason why we're playing this mod is to, you know, experience the story, see what's going on with it, make sure there's no crashes or anything, take a look at some of the, you know, actual features that it has, and uh, take a look at some of the more unique units as well. And that's exactly what we've, we're, we're doing, you know? And so, what I've done is I've enhanced our units, I've leveled them up a little bit, and, uh, yeah, you'll see exactly the reason why I've done that in a second, because this guy is very difficult. He is very, very difficult indeed. And uh, he just has a whole bunch of heavy cavalry in his army. He doesn't have a huge army. He's only got about 34, but he has some very, very strong cavalry. And, uh, yeah, the cool thing, actually, about that is the obviously the developers have thought of this, because you start off in the the kingdom of Eastmere, and you're able to then use extremely good and effective spearmen against the heavy cavalry. And, uh, yeah, I'll show you my party after this. Anyway, hello, I've been assigned to kill you, Rodrigo, and raise this caravan. Ah, you're no ordinary bandit, are you? Well, perhaps we can arrange a deal, safe passage for a sum greater than your employer promised. What do you say about a thousand silvers? Well... <laughs> sure. Shall we? Shall we do that? I've actually already done this once. It's just to uh, kind of see what the options were. If you take the silvers off his corpse, he doesn't give you anything and you don't gain anything. But if you say, here, give that to me, he gives you a thousand dinars. And then, then you say, and then you say, we're going to kill him. And then you are a fool to think I would accept such a pittance. Two arms, yes, exactly. All right, so we have 31 against 34. We have basically the same exact army that we had before the cut. But I've just leveled everyone up. So as you can see here, we have East Mere Halberdiers. And we have a uh, rogue knight over there. And we also have a horseman. Now bear in mind, remember when I said earlier on in this episode that the scouts don't seem to level up into anything? Well, yeah, they actually do level up into things. They level up into horsemen. But these horsemen are not exactly the greatest thing ever. So, you know, obviously that's something to take into account. And uh, as you can see here, the the Sword Sisters... That it, well, he doesn't have Sword Sisters. He has, he has Maiden Cavalry. But the point is, is that these these... These fellows are certainly going to take a huge amount of damage from our amazing, and, ama and I mean amazing, halberdiers. They're, they're really, really awesome. And I think that's the reason why the developers start you off in Eastmere, because they know that you're going to be fighting this, this group here. And you can see, look at this, we're actually still losing units. We're still losing units, and just bear in mind that, obviously... This is a vastly enhanced army that you would have at this point in the game. However, I noticed while traveling through the countryside, if I was going to play this legit without having to, you know, enhance anything or give myself any, any kind of levels or anything like that. I haven't given myself any levels, by the way. My character is exactly the same. Anyway, point is, if I was going to not do that, I was going to play it legit, obviously, but then I would be grinding on the thieves in the area because there's actually a whole bunch of thief parties with upwards of 10 units in each party and they have some pretty good units in there they have uh, plunderers and actual uh, thieves and bandits and all kinds of all kinds of units like that and i think they would probably be a really really good thing to grind on i think they'd be they'd be giving a lot of experience they'd give some cash and I think that's probably the way that you would do this if you were 
playing this straight up, you know? And, uh, yeah, because this is obviously a special feature, that's the reason why I'm, uh, I'm not playing it legit at the moment, because, I mean, we want to see what happens, you know? We want to progress in the story, and we want to see what happens. We want to see some of the more advanced units, stats, and everything. And, uh, yeah, there's our reward for that. We did still lose, en uh, still lose enemies? No, we still lost some of our units. So that, that says everything you need to know, really. Those guys are, are, were extremely, extremely difficult. Anyway, I uh, think I'm going to just use my, my other shield because it has a higher size to it. Oh, we got some gloves. Are those gloves actually good? Yep, those gloves are actually good. Give me those. Thank you very much. And we can just take the rest of the loot. Wow, huge amount of money right there. Very nice indeed. And uh, yeah, now, as I said before, we're going to take a look. I've given myself some money as well, by the way, so don't worry too much about that. I haven't really given myself any additional gear or anything. I just leveled up my units, as I say. Anyway, let's take a look at this. So this is the highest tier of halberdier that you're going to be getting from the Eastmere units if you level up the Spearman branch. And uh, they're pretty good. I mean, you can see that. They have 8 in Power Strike, 8 in Iron Flesh, 70 HP, 320 in every weapon proficiency. Pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Otherwise... The crossbowmen level up into some very lightly armored sharpshooters. I'm a bit dubious about recommending to level these guys up, to be honest. I would personally say if you're going to be using Eastmere units, just level up spearmen. I, I don't think that the crossbowmen are necessarily worth it. Not unless you are super dead set on having some ranged units. But I'd say it would probably be a better idea to supplement your ranged units with a different faction. So use Eastmere Spearmen, use someone else's cavalry as well, because their cavalry are not exactly great either. Uh, oh, my cavalry actually did die. Well, that's not particularly good, is it? Yeah, so that's not a particularly good recommendation either. But yeah, just, just trust me, they're... Their cavalry were not the greatest. So if you are going to be using Eastmere, highly recommend going for Spearmen and then into Halberdiers. That sounds like the best best thing to do. Anyway, I need to now go to Largo, do I not? Yes, I need to go to Largo and speak to him. Ah, there's Largo. Now, do bear in mind that if you are having trouble in your own game, if you're playing this alongside me or if you're playing it due to the first part of the special feature, then do bear in mind that Rodrigo's Caravan will travel from Teresium all the way over to Cairn Loch, as far as I'm aware. And, uh, well, just just bear in mind that if you do take the quest, and you don't have, you know, you don't have a party to be able to deal with him, he travels at a very slow speed. He travels at 0 0.4 speed. So even if you have to grind for a whole bunch of time, if you want to, then he's probably still going to be around this location here, because he has to go all the way around those mountains as far as I can tell, because I don't think there are any river crossings here. There might be a river crossing there, actually. Hmm, I'm not entirely sure about that, but he, anyway, he's going to be traveling extremely slowly, so you still might have an opportunity to go and speak to him anyway, and maybe even then he's probably going to be traveling back and forth in between the two towns. So even if you don't get him the first time, you should be able to get him the other times. So yeah, let's make our way all the way over to Largo. We already have come over here. That was extremely fast. It seems like the speed up is very, very much better than the normal. Anyway, I'm going to start increasing my strength now because we do have five in lockpicking. We don't necessarily need any further in that. Let's get some more pathfinding as well. Make sure that we're you know, as speedy as we can be. And we'll now go into the tavern and speak to... Oh, Ransom Broker, hello. Speak to the fellow that we need to speak to. Where, where is where is he, actually? Let's have a look. Oh, he will be in the streets. Oh, not in the tavern. He will be in the streets. Okay, well, let's go and speak to him then and see what he has to say for himself. All right, I'm actually unsure whether he's actually even going to be here at the moment because it is kind of... It's not really day, is it? I mean, you can see here it's very, very foggy and misty, and there's the Guildmaster. I might as well speak to the Guildmaster just to say hi, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to find the fellow. Hopefully he's not walking around. If he's walking around, then I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to be able to find him that easily, but I guess we'll just uh, look around a little bit. As you can see here, though, the architecture is actually pretty cool. I think they've, I think they've worked on this, have they? It seems uh, seems kind of unique. I mean, I haven't really 
seen the ability to go onto the battlements and things while you're walking around the street before, so maybe, maybe I just need to wait until daytime. Ah, I think I've spotted him. I think this is him. Yeah, there we go. Wow, he was he was very well camouflaged, as you can see here. He's against these kind of dark greens. He's, we he's wearing kind of a dark green outfit, kind of. Well, not really. Anyway, is Rodrigo dead yet? Yes, Rodrigo lies dead and his caravan is in ruins. Excellent. Your reward is... 50. Ah, uh, actually, he offered more. You do not want to play that game, reformist. Fighting words, those who just spoke. Now, where were we? <laughs> yeah, so, if you're going to do Rodrigo's quest, highly recommend uh, taking the thousand and then just losing a little bit of honor for that. It sounds like, a be sounds like the best thing to do. Ah, yes, your second mission is ready. I have received reports that the enemy has infiltrated Riverton and are now impersonating peasants in order to gain information on our activities. Go to the village and slay all in your sight. This is a... This is kind of shady, to be honest. I, I, I don't know whether we should really believe the mysterious figure. I would assume that he's probably the evildoer in question. And Rodrigo was probably a good guy, but we'll see. Women, men, children, if you find any, make it a gruesome sight that we may send a message to the enemy that we are always watching their movements. A vicious display of blood will turn the eyes of many and send that message to all. The reward is 600 silvers. I do not give you an option to refuse. You are in this conflict now whether you like it or not, and this task is yours alone. Oh, thanks. Thank you, mysterious figure who doesn't sound crazy at all. Oh, well, never mind. Okay, I guess we're going to be massacring Riverton, and we have to kill everyone in the next episode. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.